Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I've got an older steel 026 chainsaw. What's happening with this chainsaw, guys, is that when it's idling, the chain wants to keep turning. The owner wants me to fix that. He feels that it's a safety hazard, and it is. So I will get right into the video and show you how to fix that. And here it is, steel 026. Good saws, it's an older saw but it's actually in good condition. I'll start it up and show you what it's doing. So it's spinning, it's not too bad. I've seen chainsaws where it constantly spins. This one just kind of wants to creep and turn a bit. Now the first way you could try to fix this is by turning out the idle screw right in here. It's a mechanical screw. It does not affect the air or fuel mixture of your carburetor. If you get right in here and turn it out a bit, it'll slow down the idle of the chainsaw and it might fix the problem if it's set too high. Now, I don't like to set these screws too back out or to have the machine idling too low because sometimes when you go to throttle up, if it's idling so slow, it might actually bog and die. So I like my chainsaws to idle like this one does because when you give it gas, it's way more responsive. Now, I'm not going to turn out the idle on this chainsaw today. The best way to fix this is by replacing the clutch spring. So I'll get right into the video. Okay, first of all, you need to get the bar and chain off. And by the way, this saw here, I think, is about 25 years old. So after 25 years, the springs in the clutch will be weak. And when the springs are weak, the clutch will want to turn when it's just idling. What I'm going to do now is just go and air blow all this dirt out of here before I take it apart and I'll be right back. And now to remove the clip here, just grab your scrunch, grab the screwdriver part and just pry that clip right out. And keep your fingers on this clip guys because it may fly away on you quite easily. This will come right off. The sprocket will come right off. And now the clutch drum, and here is the clutch itself, and here are the springs. Now if I look at the springs, I can kind of see they're a bit stretched. And I know that because I've looked at the new ones before making the video. I'll just remove the clutch bearing here first. And in my hands here, I have aftermarket new springs. You can see they look much tighter than these. There's quite more space in between the springs here, right there, compared to the new ones here. And here's the part number for the springs. I've also put the part number in the video description. Now these springs will fit on the MS-260 as well, and probably other steel chainsaws. Now the best tool to remove the clutch springs is this small tool here from Still. Here's the part number, 5910-890-2800. Now not everybody will have this tool to do this job, so I will do them using other tools today. But if you work on chainsaws quite a bit, I do highly recommend that you go buy this tool. I'll actually take one spring out with this tool to show you just how handy it is. So what I do is I just grab the end here, hook it into one of the springs, and just pull it out like that. It's actually made to do this. See how easy they come off? Now this tool does come in handy as well when you are actually installing the springs because I find it's harder to install the springs than to remove them. Now another tool you can use is a pick. You can just kind of reach in and scoop it scoop the spring out so that was super easy now you can also do it using a good pair of needle nose pliers now this is not my preferred method but I'm just showing you because I do know a lot of viewers watching today 
don't have any other tools except the needle nose pliers. Now once you have the springs off like this, I do highly recommend that you go and air blow all the dirt out of here before doing the reinstallation. All right, so I've got the three springs off. It was pretty easy as you just saw there. I've got my three springs here and I'm going to show you how to put them back on. All right, so I'm going to get the first spring in there and I will use the needle nose pliers to get the first one in. Now, when you go to put your springs in, make sure all the clutch shoes are in. They tend to go out, but if you bring them in, it's easier to install the spring. Now, what you might find here is when you pull to install the spring, the engine will turn like this. What you have to do is hold it so it doesn't turn on you. What I'll do here is put a 19 millimeter socket over here, just so that I can stop the clutch from turning. So if you're not used to doing this, all you have is a ratchet 19 millimeter socket and some needle nose pliers. You might want to get a friend to hold the clutch for you so that it does not turn. This is not the best way to do it, guys, but I am showing you because I do know guys watching here or women watching don't have all the other tools. So once you have it locked in, just pull on the spring here. Make sure the shoe is inside. and push it in that hole as soon as you can, just like that. However, for the last two springs, I will use the steel tool. It's much better. It's very cheap to buy, guys, and a good investment. Okay, now I've got the second spring in the hole. I'm going to lock up the clutch, grab the other end with my steel tool. Now, since this one's a bit stubborn, I will just put my screwdriver so the shoe doesn't move here. And always make sure the springs are popped in properly. Just push on them like that and everything looks good here. And now I'm going to pack in some lithium grease on that clutch bearing. You don't need that much. Kind of squeezed out of the tube there pretty quick. And what you want to do is pack it right into the rollers. And I sometimes put just a little film on the shaft. And you don't want crazy amounts of grease because you don't want it to get on the clutch shoes here. Now before you install the clutch drum, it's important to clean it and I use brake cleaner to do that. Now on the Stillwell 26, you do not have to line up any holes to the worm gear shaft. You just basically stick it back on. Put your sprocket back. And you can use your needle nose pliers to get that little E-clip back in. All right, so I'm going to get the barn chain on. Now, when you tighten up the bar nuts, always hold the bar up. So 
So now I'll start up the saw here, see how it went. So that worked out well, the clutch springs did the job. Again, if you run across this issue, turn down the idle a bit. If that doesn't work, take the clutch off or take the clutch drum off. Clean it first sometimes if the clutch drum is too dirty, it could cause the chain to want to turn. Once you've done that, if it still wants to turn, then replace the clutch springs like I did today. Hopefully this video has helped you guys, if it has, Please make sure you are subscribed to my channel because I put out videos every week and I'm sure you'll find a video that will help you to fix your outdoor power equipment. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.